since this is supposed to be a planner sort of series, I thought that for this week it would be nice to do a. Well, this is sort of uh, what's in my planner journal stack for um, the year of 2023. So I have quite a number of planners and journal-like things, and well, it's definitely. Definitely not to say that you need these many things. In fact, I don't even use all these every single day. But um, I thought it would be nice to kind of like, you know, do an overview of what exactly is in my stack as of now. So without much further chatter chatter, um, let's get started. So first up, I'm going to start with my um, actual planners. So these are my everyday carries that I use well, pretty much every day. Um, if you've watched my previous videos, you've probably seen this already. I apologize if the glare from the light is a bit harsh. I have um, I have plastic covers on these to protect them so that they don't get dirty and scuff up. This is a fabric cover underneath, and you know, dirt and all that. This is a paper cover that actually got a bit thin, so. Because th- I bring these pretty much everywhere, I got the corresponding plastic covers in order to protect them from dirt and stuff. At least with these, I can just wipe them off with like an alcohol swab or something. So anyway, um, you've probably already seen this if you have seen my other videos, but I'm just going to do a really brief and quick flip through of what's in here. So to start with, I'm going to start with the one that I started the year with. This is the Hobonichi, um this is the Hobonichi Day Free uh, in the Teko size, so it's this original A6 size. Um, the Day Free comes in, it comes w- with, oh, well, it's the Day Free, right? So it doesn't have like the daily pages that the Hobonichi is known for. So I ha- they have the weekly, uh, they have the, you know, the calendar overview that I kind of use and I, I kind of don't use and just ignore. Then there's the yearly section, which I'm using as a tracker for various things I want to keep track of, like when do I journal, have I updated my five-year planner, um, which I'll get into in a bit, and then like um, things like ha- when I go for yoga and stuff like that. And then the monthly section, which you may have seen in my uh, April setup video, is where I keep my appointments and any big, uh, big things as well as any incoming parcels. I have started setting up May because that's next week and I mean it's I would say it's mostly done I do have to put in some more appointments in here but that's about it then other than the after the monthly for the day free essentially there's nothing but um, blank grid pages so for these what I do is that I have a time tracker over here that I fill up as the months go by and then I just do um, planning in the most traditional bullet journal style ever like this is how I used to plan when I first started bullet, bullet journaling like nine years ago in 2014 and it's kind of nice to, to come back sort of full circle so it's just like date list of things appointments etc random things that I sketch in like this is a uh, I think this is the math for if I wanted to do a double double circle skirt, something like that. Yeah. So it just goes month after month. So this is in February and then in March and then now and then now we're in April, which is uh, no, it's April now. I haven't updated it for yesterday and today, but um, yeah. And then after that, we have uh, me, which I haven't set up yet. So it. A, a day in this planner basically just looks like this so this is yesterday I kind of had to cover up some work stuff but um, so it's like appointments things to do at those appointments if necessary and then other things and then I'll just track like how much money I spend on certain things and yeah and then this is today's list and so on and so forth so when I originally filmed this video it was the 25th but um, my camera decided to go a bit bonkers so I'm actually refilming this right now so um what else is that right so that is my day free which um is basically a catch all and then oh uh, in the back of the day free so if you only want to use the day free um what what I initially did was that I put like um lists and stuff that I would use through the year at the back so this is a closet tracker thing that I'm trying to do 
and that I've been doing for the past few years actually is quite it's quite successful for me to control my spending and to be a bit more mindful if um, if you're interested I could definitely do a whole video on that honestly actually I might do that in a few weeks time we'll see and then um, so there's a no spend must spend kind of tracker that I need to update here this one I printed because drawing 365 circles perfectly is a nightmare and yeah it's just random lists and sketches and stuff so I did all this before I got my Hobo and Leads and then I stopped and I'll show you why in a bit so I got the weeks because I needed a spot to put um, day specific stuff like for example I realized on I think Thursday that I needed to refilm this video so it wouldn't make sense to write, that, write it down on Thursday when I knew that Thursday and Friday I'll be busy so with this I could just make a note here that you know on Saturday I will be filming the video and so on and so forth or like um let's see is there anything no there isn't anything for next week but uh yeah so this actually also half functions as a work planner so I can't flip too much into it but I have my I mean this is the weekly page which is what I got this planner specifically for I have my appointments I have um, dates generally date specific tasks and notes and things like that and then I kind of track my meals here I'm, I'm just testing this I'm not sure if this is too little space if this makes sense but it's nice to have it written out um, I'm just not certain if this is something uh, if this is everything it should be or if it should be uh, a bit more detailed I mean I'm still thinking about it then in this space beside here, I essentially just have, um, I just basically use it for whatever. So this week, it's uh, the things that I want to do this week, which I am, I still have a few more things to check off. And then um, there is a list of basically the panels that I'm going into for this video. Haven't really filled in the rest yet. If I don't, that is also completely fine. So um, just a quick flip through for the front for the weeks this is the spring weeks which starts in april because i only got the this planner in march uh, the yearly section i do not use i have no idea what to use it for still thinking the monthly section which i did the what do you call it which i did the um setup video for uh, i mean you if you watch that and you see this is a little bit more filled in now so i have my appointments here I have random highlights here like um, my anniversary, um, packages that came in, the fact that Mercury Retrograde started like last Friday I think yeah and then I have like things that I want to accomplish that month in this side so I've started setting up uh, me as well I'm not doing a setup video for me this time uh, I think it's a bit too close together and honestly I'll just be saying the same things again so maybe next time but uh, I started setting up me a little bit here and then that's the monthly section the weekly you've seen already so um, wh what i realized is that this planner also comes in the back with i think about 75 grid pages so i have moved my list and all over here i haven't transferred the ones in this planner over yet but um i'm still thinking if i want to do that because it feels a bit like waste of space but um in here i have things like my tea and chocolate ratings so i have a lot of tea i have a lot of chocolate um, some of it's purchased on sale some of it's gifted and i kind of want to make a dent in my collection so i make a list to see like you know um, what i have what, what i've eaten what i've uh, drank and then like you know how do i rate it and you know it kind of like informs my future purchases as well as i mean the tracker kind of incentivizes me to consume these things so i can build up kind of let me trick in myself okay anyway so this would be these would be my um, everyday planners they follow me pretty much everywhere depending on the bag I use or the situation I might bring one or the other but they're quite complimentary and uh, yeah so that this these are the everyday planner planners and honestly if your life isn't too complicated or you're not as fond of lists as I am or if you know you're a digital person or whatever there are people who just live with one or they live with none you do not need five million plans really you do not but if you enjoy them that's a different story all right so moving right along because I don't want to take too long for this and I'm sorry if you hear any construction works like the apartment building I'm in they are they are renovating um they're replacing one of the lifts so there's going to be a lot of the 
Rachel works here for the next like four months. Yeah, it's quite annoying. All right, so um, what's the next one? All right, so this is my journal. I would say this is d- definitely a journal. This is not a plan in any way or form, but I would still consider it kind of plan adjacent because I do spend a lot of my time in here. So this cover is a Hobonichi cat trial cover. So this is from Hobonichi for the Hobonichi cousin, but um, I don't like the cousin because there's just way too much for me to fill in, too much space. So I got the I got the, I kept the cover. I I mean this was purchased in twenty in twenty twenty one. Yep. So I just put in I mean it fits A5, so I just use it for my journal. And um I don't know if the camera can pick up on this, but this is a <laughs> sorry about that. So this is a cos a Musubi Cosmo Airlight folio. So it has a dot grid and in the corner over here they have the pages the page number printed really really lightly. Oh sorry, they call it cross grid because instead of a dot it's actually a tiny little cross. So um I use these as like guidelines for writing and and essentially I just dump my brain out on them. I'm not gonna show you the pages because um they're really really personal but this is essentially um dear diary. You know, idea that I ex- uh, this thing happened today, how do I feel about it, and uh, kind of like working through stuff emotionally, I find it really useful and helpful. Um, yeah, I can go more into like, again, I can go more into like what I think about it, but this for this one, I would definitely not be flipping through it on camera, it's just a little bit too personal for that. And because this plan, this cover was extremely expensive. <laughs> And already a bit thing that I had to get the cover on cover from Hobonichi when I saw they had it because um, when I purchased ho- my Hobonichi stuff last year because I can't bear this getting any dirtier than it already has like it has three cats on it and, and I just love it I mean I have three black cats and then it's three grey cats and that's close enough love this anyway so those are the planners that I use pretty much every single day or in the case of the journal I try to use every single day um now I'm going to talk about I have Now I have a whole stack of uh, Other planners Journal things And it's quite a lot So I'm going to split it into Two categories so to speak So I'm first, first I'm just going to talk about The memory keeping kind of stuff So again these are Hobonichi And yeah I know I have a lot of Hobonichi But I love Tomoe Room paper So yeah Alright, so I'm going to start with the one that you've seen already. So this is, uh, it, I used it in, I, I think I was using it in last week's video. So this is the um, Hobonichi 5 year planner in the grey Ohio cover. So this is the A6 size because I find A5 for such things very intimidating and like there's a lot of space to fill up which is kind of stressful. So I try and keep it like as low commitment as possible for myself so that I can um, actually succeed in filling it up and I think I have succeeded quite well so far this year. So this is for this year to, the twi- uh, to 2027. I start- I bought this last year because I turned 30 in December and I was like, you know what, let's just get a five year and this can be like a chronicle of my 30s kind of sort of thing. So essentially what this is, is the highs and lows of every day. Um, it's just a few sentences, a couple of sentences here and there, nothing fancy, you know, there's no, um, what do you call it, there's, there, uh, sometimes I use a sticker, sometimes, like, like here I used a bit of a sticker, uh, then sometimes I don't bother, it's just words, and yeah, that's about it. Um, so the way this is set up, I'm just going to show you a blank page, is that they have the date on top, they have the years, I mean, it's quite standard in 5 year planners, I think. I think they're 10 year ones as well, but I find those like a little bit too much of commitment. So, here for you to fill up, and then one blank page for you to do whatever you want with. So, um, what I do with this is that I fill up this side, and then this side I slowly fill it. Uh, I'll, I'll just fill it up over the years. So, a lot of them are blank right now, and I'm fine with that because I still have another 4 years, it's okay. Um, 
yeah so I'm filming this on the 28th and as you can see I have kind of fallen behind a little bit because I've missed like three days now but it's okay because it's like two three sentences a day I can very easily catch up even if it's three days so this is honestly this is my best idea for this year I feel it's very very easy to catch up as long as you don't fall off fall back for like I mean if you fall off the wagon for like I guess like two weeks or something it's gonna be awful but like a few days honestly is still quite easy to catch up so um yeah I like this uh, on this page I don't really have a lot of stuff as you can see um wait uh, give me a moment so some did like when my washi came in I was so excited I had to like you know memorialize them here Right. And other times, I think when we were moving house, I put um, some books into storage. So they'll probably hopefully be out of storage in five years time. But in the meantime, having this here is um, a good and easy reference for me to have. And then there, there was another time when we went to IKEA and we saw like a bunch of things that I thought might work for the house. So I kind of just made a list here just for fun. I mean, I don't think I'll refer to this that often but it's kind of cute to like take note of like the things that I like so it was, it was a bit of sketching as well so yeah this is just all for fun I also am considering getting a photo printer to you know add on a bit because there's some things that are quite funny like you know like the high point is like you know my cat snuggled up, snug, snuggled up to me for the night or something and I have a good picture but mm, I can't really draw that well at least not it won't be as good as a picture so yeah, I'm just thinking it might be nice to have a photo printer to like, you know, paste stickers, uh, photo stickers in here later on. So, yeah, this is my memory keeping journal. And this one, because it's fabric and I hopefully a camera can pick it up, it's kind of like textured fabric with embroidery. It's really nice. But because it's fabric and it doesn't come with a plastic cover, simply because it's a lot thicker than the standard home entry that you grab before. So it's a lot thicker so it wouldn't be able to fit the cover the typical cover. So when I bought this it came with this um they call this a semi fashion bag. So I just kinda let it live in here and you know keep it out of the dust and all that. This is an extra step to take it out on like days that I'm tired, but I kinda wanna preserve the cover more than it is. Alright, so the last uh the other memory keeping thing I do is kinda silly. Uh, this is the Hobonichi Weekly Supplement. So I'm going to show you what a taco looks like. And I'll get into why I have a taco to begin with um, later on. But a standard Hobonichi taco comes with the... This is black by the way. So um, it comes with the weekly which you saw in my day free. And then there is... Sorry, not weekly. This is the... Ah, what's this called? There's the yearly kind of thing which is a day two, which is on day three. There's the Monday which you also saw on the day three, and then after that there are what we call um, daily pages, right? And that's it. Whereas in the cousin, which is the A5 size, it also has a weekly section. So what Hobonichi did was that they created this weekly supplement, which is tinier than it's even smaller than the basic size. And essentially what this does is that um, it's a supplement to it, right? So I bought this not with the intention even for any sort of planning, but with the intention of memory keeping because I thought that it would be really easy to um, use to record like what I did and you know just practice doing that in Japanese because that's what I'm learning right now. So um, it's a work in progress because it was uh, I got this in I want to say March. Yeah, I think I got this in March at the same time as when I got the weeks. So I had quite a lot to catch up on and then I was moving and everything. So I kind of fell off the wagon. I do have maybe 10 weeks or so to catch up on this. But hopefully by, uh, the, by the end of June, so like at the midpoint of the year, I will have, I'll be all caught up. This page is really putting me off because honestly, this was the week, the week I was down with COVID and I'm like, what am I going to write for the week that I was down with COVID? I lost my sense of smell. I spent all my time sleeping. Like, like it's nothing to write. So in any case, yeah, this is a work in progress. And this is also memory keeping of a sort. So I feel like as I, hopefully as I progress, I'll be more embarrassed by what is going on in here. And I probably 
wouldn't want to read it again but in any case it's good practice right so that is my uh, what do you call it Th- those are my memory keeping journals alright last but definitely not least these are more of um, hobby journals I would say they are definitely not journals that I use every single day they are journals that I use as and when and they are more of a yeah they're just hobby journals that's the, that's the easiest way to put it so first up is my uh, so this covers from Mossery and so is the notebook they are a Malaysian brand they do planners they do sketchbooks um, the cool they, they're kind of in a sense like their model is similar to Hobonichi in that they sell covers like you know like this and then they also have like inserts that you can customize um, to s- so you can customize the insides so you can have like planners you can have sketchbooks and all that so um, I used it I bought this as a planner in 20 I want to say 2020 and then um after that obviously like the planner was defunct because the year had passed but I didn't really want to use the planner again for 2021 so I kept the cover but uh, after a while I realized they also do sketchbooks so I bought uh, this is a mixed media okay, let me just double check so this is a yes this is a Mosery sketchbook mixed media um, I can't remember the grammage of the paper I, I'm not sure if it's 300 or if it's 170 but it's relatively heavy so I'm using this for my um, tarot journal right now um, I only have done one spread so far um, I'm still figuring out how exactly I want to do this but I did a spread and uh, or rather I just pulled a couple of cards the other time and I had like you know these were the cards I drew so th- these are kind of like an approximation of what the cards look like I am using the cat tarot deck which is super cute uh, yeah but I don't trust myself to draw that well so it's kind of I mean like look at this cat here it's kind of formed I can't even copy a card right yeah so and then around it is just like um, things about the card uh, things about like the card like the meanings and so forth so on and so forth so this is yeah so this is what I'm doing in this journal hopefully I have time to fill this out as the year goes by but honestly even even if I don't finish this up this year it's no skin off my nose because this is definitely not year specific right so that is uh, my mosery I also got a cover for it because this cover got pretty dinged up and I touched it up already once so I they sell like a cover for this and I got a cover for it the elastic band section here um, well it kind of got a bit overstretched I mean it is at this point at least two two years old so I and I was like you know looping and looping a lot so I just snipped it off and you know I just live about it and it's fine finally last but not least definitely is uh, my last journal thing which is a uh, ink journal so this is definitely not a planner thing nobody needs an ink journal honestly and this of course you're really into fountain pens and fountain pen ink and you know you have lots of it like me I do have a lot so um, yeah just just um, okay it's a bit hard to take it out but in any case um, I started out my ink journey so to speak with one of these so this is a gift from a friend uh, I think it's quite popular in the fountain pen community to fall uh, because it's really good for swatching like inks and stuff so I had like I have like some of these samples I don't own like I think they're like 97 here because I it's a set of 100 but um, I ended up flubbing a few so they're only 97 so um, yeah so these are great because you can kind of like move them around and all so I have I had this but I ran out of room so and also the other thing is that this only shows you the color which uh, which, which is good like you know it shows you the color but it doesn't show you how it behaves um, in various pens and whatnot because this is just a smudge right um, it's just a splat kind of situation uh, it does it does show you sheen if um, if it's saturated enough this is um, Pilot Yoshizuku Yamabudo which is a really nice purple but it has a gold sheen as uh, hopefully you can see here give me a moment let me so yeah it has a really nice gold sheen this is not glitter this is essentially if it's saturated on the paper enough 
and the paper is super exorbitant like tomorrow with a paper where the ink sits on top you will get this um, gold sheen on the edges of your letters which is very very nice but um, what was I saying right so um, I had this I started with this and I ran out of space and I still have ink I do not own seven, uh, 90 over bottles of ink what I do have is a lot of ink samples as gifts and stuff like that like you know things that I either purchase or people give me as like you know just as a treat so um, it was a bit frustrating and limiting so I thought that it would be nice to start an ink journal and essentially so I thought I would do it with my Tokyo Station um, what's this my Tokyo Station insert from well Traveler's Factory Tokyo Station I've been very precious about not using this because I only have one I don't know when I'm going to Tokyo again, especially, you know, like, at that point in time, there was, like, COVID and everything, and, like, we didn't travel for, basically, I have not, I haven't left the country since 20, 2019, <laughs> when I went to, uh, I went to Japan in 2019, and I haven't gone anywhere since, basically, maybe I went to Johor, I'm not sure, but that hardly counts when you go to Singapore, so, in any case, I thought that I, it would be nice to, to have a record, so to speak, so I started this journal in... August last year. So I got this stamp from um, Stickerific in Malaysia. This is the, I think it's called, the brand is called uh, Kodomo no Kao. Uh, no, Kodomo no Nao. One or the other. But anyway, this is their ink swatch kind of stamp. And um, you can kind of like color in the ink bottle. There's a spot for you to do any swatching you want. You can write the date of when you bought the ink, the color, the series or the brand so this uh Hanai Kada from Palette Yoshizuku there's the price as well as um how much ink there is in this bottle so you can kind of like calculate the price in it <coughs> excuse me and then there is uh this part you can put down what pen you use to write so I use this to record which pen this is written in it's not very well thought out honestly and then um, as an on my card and then below I write down like what I th- what I think about this colour in this ink uh, this ink in this pen yeah so I've done it for various inks the thought was that um, as I put it in different pens I can record it down and you know I can put down my thoughts on it. So Sabi Sabi Midori is one of my favorites. Uh, it's new. It's new to me anyway. But in the bottle it looks blue, but depending on the paper, um, it can look quite greenish, and it has a very nice um red sheen to it. Yeah. So there is yeah. So this is what I started with in August last year, and I kept up with it for quite a while, but um because there's only so much a girl can write a day um, it hasn't been filled that much and I still have a lot of ink to get through so that was my thought for this but then but then I was on Instagram earlier this year and there's this lady from the Philippines I I forget her name off the top of my head but she um, I've been following her for a really long time now and she has she did this absolutely brilliant thing with a Hobonichi and I had to do it because this is the last year um, Hobonichi is using the original Tomoe River paper so if you follow like all these things you would know that uh, at least I guess you might know that uh, the original Tomoe River paper has ceased to be in production and they, are, they do have a new one like a replacement but it's, it's definitely not the same and it's not it doesn't, I think it doesn't show sheen as well so um this is the last year that they are doing the original paper so i kind of had it was like you either get this this year or like you deal with the old paper in the future i'm oh, sorry the new paper in the future which i wasn't that keen on so what she did was that with uh i i'm not sure she used a taco or or a cousin but i'm using i'm using a taco because i i'm not sure how to use the weekly section in this taco so what she did was that she assigned a a color family like for example like blues or greens or something to like a month and then she would swatch like you know like like those big swabby um, swatches in each day and so for example if I had put Savi Midori for uh, like you know the one that I showed you earlier in on March the 1st then on March the 1st um, in the daily section 
there would be a writing sample of some Midori. And like, I was just like, that is freaking brilliant! Like, I could have like all my swatches categorized here, like every single thing that I ever own, it will all be here. And I don't need to do this, and I can do this without having to ink it up because it's just a swap, right? And then as I ink it up, I can do writing samples in the corresponding page. And I don't need to think about leaving space because if each uh, if each month or e- every two months is a color family, like for example, like I start with like reds, I mean like red slash brown slash orange can be like because there's a bit of overlap, so that can be like one family, right? And that's like the first two months, and then the next two months can be like pink, purples, I guess, or like, you know greens and then blues and so on and so forth, or, or like grays can be like a whole category in and of itself. And yeah, so I was like, that's just that's just freaking smart. I was like, why why did I not like I feel so dumb for not thinking of that. But in any case, so I could very easily have like like this could be an index and also like a record of all the colours that I have. And then over here I can do like for example, um like I mean there are one, two, four, five. I could do maybe um the the pen for the first sample and then like you know I write a few sentences and then like the next one and so on and so forth. I know for writing samples, some people do like um, a lot of it. Some some people write out um, pages from a book or whatever. I mean, it doesn't really matter because all I want to see is the pen in the the ink in various pens, like you know, different nib sizes. So, and we're having to you know do it all at once. So this honestly, I am really excited to set this up. I haven't had the time to do it yet because I've just been so busy. I mean, what with moving houses and all that, but I'm really excited to set this up. The only thing I am frustrated by is that um, I don't know what to do with this now. <laughs> because this will effectively replace this and it feels so, so, so sayang wasted to just you know, chuck this out of the window because it's... But at the same time, having them both doesn't make sense. So, um, And, you know, I was precious about this. I am still precious about this, so... I, I, I'm kind of stuck right now because part of why I wanted to do this was because I have the cover and right now it's filled with my 2029 journal I don't know, 2029 hasn't passed yet oh my god, what am I saying? Uh, my 2019 journal is in here and like I'm trying to finish it up so once it's done, I just have an empty cover so my thought then was to put the ink journal which I would use in perpetuity into this and, and you know, it will have a home and a purpose so that that was my thinking but right now I essentially don't have a use for that journal at all or rather that cover at all like once I'm done with my 2019 and it will just be a very expensive very pretty leather, leather cover sitting well collecting dust so that's a thought for the future um, I don't really want to force out a journal where I don't have to, where I don't need one, so um, I'll, I'll keep thinking about it, but that's definitely something that's influencing my decisions on <laughs> the number of journals I have, honestly speaking. But that might be for the next year or the year after that, so we'll see. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this is my plan for... This is my last journal. I, I actually lost track of how many I have. So two-day freeze, my Dear Diary journal, my... Okay, this is the seventh one. So this is kind of like my seventh, or if you count th- these two separately, my eighth journal. So you, nobody needs seven or eight journals, honestly. So um, I haven't set this up yet, uh, but my I am planning to try to keep, uh, try not to bulk this up too much. So I have some stickers here that I want to use to cover this up because, um, well, this is supposed to be an ink journal, so I kind of want to decorate it a bit. I have some stickers here, and then I have a cover for the whole thing where. Um, you know, that will protect the thing from a bit of um, damage in the future. I wish that there was a matte kind of cover, but I, if there's one, I haven't found it yet. So, and I, I kind of don't want to waste my time hunting one now. But um, yeah, so that's the plan for this one. Um, hopefully, I will have it filled at some point and or you know, somewhere, some semblance to being filled. And I can show you what it looks like when it's not just an empty book for, uh, for an idea. Yep, so that is, um, so that's all my journals, that's uh, kind of like my journal stack of the year, like all of them. I 
know it's quite a lot and again I need to reiterate you do not need these many journals if like you know if one makes you happy then or like you know if that's enough for you then so be it if digital is good enough that's fine like for me I don't function well on digital I, I do do digital if it's a big project like um, like a big spring cleaning project or something uh, that requires more than just my attention it's like for example it requires mine and my husband's attention I definitely take it digital I have my appointments um, on Google because it helps coordinate our schedules but I I can't function without a paper brain <laughs> basically I, I need paper in my life I can't I can't not paper I, sometimes the, the thoughts only flow when you have paper basically so I hope you enjoyed this video of what's essentially my journal stack so far for 2023 if things change radically i might do an update in the future but if not this is probably where it's gonna stay for the rest of the year i, mean, I hope so because i, I don't want to buy more planners or discard more planners i always feel so i always feel such a waste when like it doesn't work out and you know you don't know what to do with it after that so i definitely hope these you know stick around for the rest of the year and if they work out i think they will but um, yeah hopefully and oh wait i missed one this is the whole stack. I miss I miss the tarot ones. The whole stack looks like this. Yeah, it's actually I was I was looking at it and I was like, mm, it feels like there's something missing. So that's the stack for the year. Um hopefully it stays as it is, it doesn't um change overly much. And yeah, that is my 2023 setup so to speak, including all the hobby journals and and you know, less essential stuff. I mean, essential is just my two everyday carry friends. The rest are just for f just for fun, just for shits and giggles. Yep. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe it gave you some ideas of what you might want to do if you're looking for a new planner, um, journal idea or something. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. I guess I have no idea what the next one's gonna be, but well, I did say maybe I'll. S uh, I did say I want to set up the. Uh, I did say I want to set up the ink journal, so maybe that. If not, um, frankly, I have no idea. <laughs> we'll see. Alright, so uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!